black experience here in the U.S. who center the black experience, you know, globally, who center the global South, right? Who center marginalized voices, who center, you know, marginalized knowledge, right? Because the North, the global North is the only space that, you know, produces knowledge, right? And, you know, I teach in the Africana Studies Department and the Caribbean Studies Program. And the Africana Studies Department here, you know, I'm not sure people know the story of its founding, it was students like you all who were like setting fires, like literal fires in Boylan Hall and, you know, locking themselves in the president's office, you know, demanding, not just, you know, this department, you know, but, you know, demanding, you know, fair equal treatment here, you know, on, on the campus. And I know the Puerto, Puerto Rican and, you know, Latinx studies department has a very, you know, share, you know, sharing this history. Um, and I must say, you know, you, you hear the accent, I am from Trinidad, and I did come to New York City to attend Brooklyn College, so I came to New York for, for here, for this place, you know, and I'm happy to be back here as a um, professor. And, you know, it's maybe sad to say that it's in, it's in coming to the U.S. and attending Brooklyn College that I began to understand blackness and what it means to be a black body. Right, because you know, systems of racialization differs, you know, in many spaces. But of course, anti-blackness is very much ubiquitous, right? <laughs> White supremacy, you know, all of these things are very ubiquitous. But it was in the US I began to underst understand myself as a black body, right? To experience blackness, right? And begin to understand, you know, the interconnectedness and how interwoven we are as black people in the diaspora. So I'm gonna go to script now. <laughs> so, you know, we need to, you know, see how interwoven we are in the black diaspora and especially understand blackness in the Americas, right? Professor Kome spoke about, you know, Africa, West Africa, Nigeria. My work focuses on the Americas, right? And not just North America, which often seems to be the center. I remember once teaching a class and I showed a map and someone said, oh, I thought, I thought the U.S. was at the center, you know? <laughs> And it, it speaks about how we need to descend, decenter, you know, how we are educated, you know, what, you know, the things that we learn, right? Um, so the Americas, North, South, Central, right, the greater Caribbean space, right? You know, how interwoven we are. And that while we may have experienced, again, different processes of racialization, what remains is that anti-blackness is ubiquitous, right? That racialized capitalism, right? This idea that racialized exploitation and capital accumulation are mutually constitutive, it was the foundation of colonialism and its legacy still exists. I often tell my Caribbean studies students, I think like every class, that we live the legacies of colonialism in the Caribbean. And then sometimes I think we forget that the US was also colonized. So we live these still legacies. <laughs> we live these <laughs> legacies today, right? And then of course, you know, we can't think of black history without thinking about, you know, black peoples globally. And I know Professor St. Paul will speak about this. We cannot speak about black history without talking about 1804 mm -hmm. and what happened then. And I know I'm not gonna to touch it, but Professor St. Paul will, right? Or even, you know, the Morant's Bay Rebellion in Jamaica, 1865, right? Or Buster's Rebellion in Barbados, or the Damarara Rebellion in Guyana in 1823, right? Black peoples, right? Particularly in the Americas, right resisting and usually when i teach my teach classes on the legacy of african slavery in the americas i always have to speak about resistance we cannot speak about enslavement without speaking about the rich legacy of resistance right and then you know finally you know as a i describe myself as a black dougla woman right i am black i'm also dougla dougla is a word um very salient in some caribbean spaces which speak of um, mixed race persons of mixed Indian and African descent. So that word Douglas comes from the Bhojpuri dialect, which is a Hindi dialect, and it actually connotes, denotes, sorry, dog, bastard, son of a whore, mongrel, because it was this idea of Indianness becoming impure by mixing with blackness. So my legacy is one of anti-blackness, right? <laughs> right, in, in that way. Um, and again, learning, you know, understanding what it means to be a black body here in the U.S. And, you know, many Afro-Caribbean immigrants in the U.S., they do share racial minority status with African-Americans. But then they can also choose their ethnic identities as voluntary immigrants. 
Um, so I say yes, and nonetheless, we have seen where Afro-Caribbean immigrants have historically united with Black Americans, right? Particularly during the Harlem Renaissance, the civil rights movement to fight against racism and discrimination in the United States. But I like to tell you know my students, you know, like let's say I'm being pulled over, I can't put on my best Trini accent, right? And so listen, I took away, you know, like you know, my blackness is very much you know <laughs> most um, visible, right? So, you know, I think of people like the great Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey was a Jamaican man who reconstructed, you know, how black people globally and black Americans thought about themselves, right? I think about Arturo Schomburg, right? Puerto Rican, Afro-Puerto Rican, who, you know, at a young age, was he in fifth grade when he's told that, you know, black people have no history, right? And he spends the rest of his life proving that teacher, proving that wrong. Right, I think of Claude McKay, right, Jamaican, right, who was a very instrumental writer during the Harlem Renaissance, and his poem, if, if, if we must die, we, as an Afro-descended people who are experiencing blackness, anti-blackness, who are living under, right, capitalism, right, white supremacy, right, I think of, you know, George Padmore, there's no Pan-Africanism, right, without Trinidadian George Padmore. I think of C.L.R. James, Claudia Jones, Amy Ashwood Garvey, right? I think of Malcolm X, whose mother was from Grenada, right? And whose mother was a Garveyite, a follower of Marcus Garvey, right? I think of people like Stokely Carmichael, right? Many of us know the phrase Black Power, right? But Stokely Carmichael was a Trinidadian, you know, immigrant, right? Went to Howard University. Right, and then you know, and there are those you know Afro-Caribbean immigrants who, yes, we come, we experience blackness, and the struggle it is very much, it is very much a global struggle. So, oh, there's one more, James Weldon Johnson. <laughs> so many of us know the you know the black, what is known as the Black National Anthem, right? His mother was from the Bahamas. Yeah, so it is you know we are all you know it's very much interwoven in that way. So I'll stop there. Thank you.